Hello, this is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary here in Seattle Public Schools. This lesson is for fifth graders and it's our fourth lesson of week one in unit eight of your Making Meaning book. This unit is all about determining important ideas and summarizing. This week we've been reading A River Ran Wild by Lynn Cherry. And in the previous lessons, we used a strategy called Think, Pair, Write to write down the important ideas of the book. Let's look now at those important ideas that we wrote down to refresh our memory. First, we said long ago, the river valley was home to many animals. and Native people settled along the river. We said the native people respected nature. They only killed the animals they needed to survive. But then a white trader came to the Nashua River and started a trading post. Then lots of settlers came and started chopping down the forest. The settlers kicked the Native Americans off their land, so a war started that the settlers won, but still the Nashua River was mostly healthy. In the next lesson, we said some important ideas were that pollution from the factories began to hurt the river and the wildlife. Also, the pollution got so bad that the Nashua River was disgusting. But then Marion and Oeana decided to try and fix the problem. They led a campaign until new laws were passed to end the pollution in the river. And lastly, the Nashua slowly got rid of all the pollution. People were able to use it again, and the wildlife returned. I want to point out again that the genre of this book is narrative nonfiction. And since it's nonfiction, that means that all of these events really happened. Here are some images of what the pollution actually looked like in the Nashua River. And here's what it looks like today. Also, the woman they mentioned, Marion, is Marion Stoddard, who was a real life activist who helped to get the Nashua River clean again. Today we're going to work on a skill of determining what parts of a text are important ideas and what parts are what we call supporting details. We're going to look at two passages from A River Ran Wild. And the first one we're going to do more together and the second one you'll do independently. We're going to look at an excerpt from A River Ran Wild and try and identify important ideas. This part of the book comes after the Native Americans have just been driven off their land by some settlers. At the start of the new century, an industrial revolution came to the Nashua's banks and waters. Many new machines were invented. Some spun thread from wool and cotton. Others wove the thread into cloth. Some machines turned wood to pulp and others made the pulp into paper. Leftover pulp and dye and fiber were dumped into the Nashua River, whose swiftly flowing current washed away the waste. Hmm. To make sure we didn't miss anything, I'm going to read it one more time. At the start of the new century, an industrial revolution came to the Nashua's banks and waters. Many new machines were invented. Some spun thread from wool and cotton. Others wove the thread into cloth. Some machines turned wood to pulp, and others made the pulp into paper. Leftover pulp and dye and fiber was dumped into the Nashua River, whose swiftly flowing current washed away the waste. What are the important ideas in this part of the story? Well, one idea that seems important to understand and remember in this paragraph is that many new machines were invented. The reason I think this is important is that later we find out that these machines polluted the river. So I'm going to underline that important idea. Many new machines were invented. I'm going to underline another sentence too. Some spun thread from wool and cotton. And this is a detail that describes some of the new machines. It just tells us more about what these machines did. 
When you have details, examples, or descriptions that tell more about something or support the ideas that you're talking about, we call those supporting details. We're going to underline some more supporting details in red. What do you think we should underline? What other details in this paragraph support the important idea that many new machines were invented? You might have said, others wove the thread into cloth. Because this sentence keeps telling us more information about what the new machines did. You could have also said, some machines turned wood to pulp and others made the pulp into paper. Because again, these details aren't really important ideas that you have to know to understand the book, but they support what these new machines were and what they did. Let's look at the last sentence now. Leftover pulp and dye and fiber was dumped into the Nashua River, whose swiftly flowing current washed away the waste. Do you think that is an important idea or a supporting detail? I wanted you to turn to your partner now. And remember, a partner here can be a friend or a family member that's right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal or someone you're calling on your imaginary phone. You can also use whatever language you feel most comfortable with. But please turn to your partner now and tell them if you think that last sentence is an important idea or a supporting detail. Remember to use the prompt, the reason I think that is, to explain your thinking. You may have said that this is an important idea. And the reason you think that is, is because it tells how these machines started to pollute the river. But maybe you disagree. And maybe you said this was just a supporting detail. And the reason that you think that is because you don't really need to know everything about pulp and dye and fiber. To be honest, there's no absolute correct answer. Some of you might think it's a supporting detail and some of you might think it's an important idea and that's totally fine. Not every single sentence is gonna fall neatly into one category or the other. So I'm going to underline this sentence in purple. Let's keep in mind, you're not going to need to remember every single word or detail in a text. It's important to think about what ideas are the most important for you to understand and remember. Also, you need to work on this skill because good readers are always deciding what is an important idea and what is a supporting detail. We're gonna practice this skill one more time with another passage that'll be more you working independently. This excerpt continues from where the one before left off with all those new machines being built. I'm gonna read it first, and I want you to be thinking about what are the important ideas and what are the supporting details. These were times of much excitement, times of progress and invention. Factories along the Nashua River made new things of new materials. Telephones and radios and other things were made of plastics. Chemicals and plastic waste were also dumped into the river. Soon, the Nashua's fish and wildlife grew sick from this pollution. The paper mills continued to pollute the Nashua's waters. Every day for many decades, pulp was dumped into the Nashua and as the pulp clogged up the river, it began to run more slowly. As the pulp decomposed, bad smells welled up from the river. 
People who lived near the river smelled its stench and stayed far from it. Each day, as the mills dyed paper red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashua ran whatever color the paper was dyed. Soon, no fish lived in the river. No birds stopped on their migration. No one could see pebbles shining up through murky water. The Nashua was dark and dirty. The Nashua was slowly dying. Now it's your turn, and you're gonna read this passage again, and you need to identify one important idea and one supporting detail. There are a lot of things you could have put down for your important idea and a lot of things you could have put down for your supporting detail. There's no exact right or wrong answer. The most important thing is that you explain your thinking and explain your opinion. Here's some things you could have put down. And remember, I'm going to underline the important ideas in blue and underline the supporting details in red. You could have said, Soon the Nashua's fish and wildlife grew sick from pollution is an important idea because this really is showing that the pollution is getting so bad that it's killing animals. You also could have said that this is an important idea. The Nashua was slowly dying. And that's an important idea because it's really what the whole book is about, how pollution came close to killing this important river. For supporting details, you could have said something like, for supporting details, you could have said that no one could see pebbles shining up through murky water is a supporting detail because it's just giving an example of how dirty the river became. You also could have said that each day as the mills dyed paper red, green, blue, and yellow, the Nashua ran whatever color the paper was dyed is a supporting detail because again, it's just giving more information about what the pollution looked like. Maybe you said chemicals and plastic waste were also dumped into the river is a supporting detail. Because again, it's just going into more detail and description about what type of pollution was happening. Let's look now at our reading comprehension strategies chart. You probably have one of these hanging back in your fifth grade classroom. This shows you all the different strategies you can use to better understand a text that you're reading. We're going to add one today. Here are the reading comprehension strategies that you've been using so far this year in fifth grade. Using text features, questioning, recognizing story elements, making inferences, visualizing, and analyzing how texts are organized. And now we're going to add one more, determining important ideas and supporting details, which is the skill that we've been working on today. Remember, if you can do this while you read, you're going to have a much better understanding of what the text is trying to tell you. 
Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Find a narrative nonfiction or a fiction book and make sure you read for at least 30 minutes. While you read today, you're going to use sticky notes. And if you don't have sticky notes, you can just use cut up squares of paper. But anytime you find an important idea in your book, you're going to write down that idea on a sticky note or a cut up square of paper and put it in your book. The book I'll be reading is called As Brave As You by Jason Reynolds. This book is about two brothers named Jeannie and Ernie that go to stay with their grandparents for the summer. This is a crazy experience for them because they're normally from a big city and they're going to have to stay in the country. And then they find out that their grandfather is actually blind. Here's an example of what you need to do during IDR. I'm going to read a little from my book and this is a few pages in. And remember, we're going to be looking for important ideas. Grandma was the one who put Ernie and Jeannie on poop patrol in the first place, in case you were wondering. Neither one of them had ever had to shovel poop out of anyone's yard before, because first of all, in Brooklyn, most people don't have yards. And secondly, most Brooklyn folks just pick it up with plastic baggies whenever a dog does his do on the sidewalk. Hmm. So it seems to me really important that Ernie and Jeannie are from Brooklyn. So I'm gonna write Ernie and Jeannie are from Brooklyn. I know that's in New York. Not everybody, but the majority. But there were no sidewalks here in North Hill, Virginia. No brownstones with the cement stoops where you could watch the buses, ice cream trucks, and taxis ride by. Nope. North Hill, Virginia was country. Like country, country. And Jeannie and Ernie were staying there in a small white house on the top of a hill. Grandma and Grandpa's house for a month, like 30 whole days. Hmm. Well, and this seems like another important idea to me, so I'm gonna put down another post-it. I'm gonna say Ernie and Jeannie are staying in the country. Your grandparents for a whole month. So that's what you need to do during your IDR today. Find important ideas, write them down, and put them in the book. Well, let's get reading. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.